Today I want to dive deep into this little board, the Yu-Yi 2 X1. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a weird bug type Pokemon. It's essentially a full featured mini PC that ships ready to run with Windows 11 Pro already installed on its built-in onboard storage. Windows is nice and all, but I've set mine up with a dual boot Kali Linux from an NVMe SSD, turning it into a compact, dedicated cybersecurity training box. Quick disclaimer, I'm definitely not a cybersecurity expert, but having a separate isolated environment like this is exactly what I need to safely explore and experiment with pen testing tools and network security while maintaining the integrity and security of my primary network. Work. First, let's run through what exactly this version of the X1 board brings to the table. It's a quad core processor capable of up to 2.9 gigahertz. Plenty for basic computing, home lab projects, or even lightweight virtualization. This model includes 8 gigs of onboard LPDDR4 RAM, soldered on board, so no upgrading here, but that's decent for a lot of basic tasks, and built in 128 gig eMMC storage for Windows 11, plus an M.2 2280 slot where you can add NVMe or SATA SSDs. Perfect for an additional operating system, data storage, or larger programs. They do have a multitude of pre-built options ranging from 4 gigs of RAM with no onboard storage, all the way up to 16 gigs of RAM and 250 gigs of onboard storage. But they all come with that 11th gen Intel processor. Graphics wise, it's got dual HDMI ports. One is full size and one is that mini or micro HDMI port. Both support up to 4K at 60 hertz though. Great for multi-monitor setups, dashboards, or even a small-scale media server. Now beyond these basics, the board is actually packed with a lot of extra connectors and options, making it really versatile for DIY projects and specialized tasks. So we've got four standard USB ports on here, two are USB 3 ports for faster drives or peripherals, and then there's two USB 2 ports for simple stuff like keyboard and mouse. However, there is no USB-C port on this board, which is kind of a missed opportunity in 2025, but will survive. A single gigabit ethernet port handles network connectivity out of the box, but if you need wireless or even cellular connectivity, there's an M.2 E key slot specifically designed for Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, or 4G LTE modules. And for those interested in tinkering deeper, the X1 includes extra GPIO pins, as well as UART, SPI, and I2C headers. That means you can directly interface with sensors or Arduino style projects, RFID modules, lots of blinky LEDs, or just about any hardware project you can dream up. As far as size goes, the X1 is impressively small. Ladies, only a little bigger than the Raspberry Pi. To put that into perspective, it's about the size of a standard deck of cards, making it easy to toss into your backpack, travel kit, or even hide away neatly in a home server rack setup. So let's talk practicality. What exactly could you use this little guy for? First and foremost, cybersecurity training. And that's my primary goal here. Running Kali Linux separately from my server or workstation gives me an isolated environment. It's safer, more portable, and avoids the risk of accidentally interfering with my work network because that would be an awkward conversation to have with internal IT. Sorry, Carl. It can handle tasks like running Docker containers for lightweight apps, hosting your own private VPN or Pi-hole DNS server, or even serving up media with something like Plex or Jellyfin. Because of the GPIO headers, it's also perfect for DIY electronics gadget projects. Think smart home automation controllers, sensor hubs, or specialized embedded projects. It's powerful enough as a dedicated development or testing machine too, like put Ubuntu or Fedora on there and you've got yourself a portable dev workstation. And let's not forget about home automation. You can use it to manage security cameras, network storage, or dashboards displaying real-time metrics. Setting up the dual boot between Windows and and Kali Linux was really straightforward, but I did encounter one small hiccup. When unplugged, the board loses BIOS settings, which means when I tell it to boot to Kali first by default, it forgets this setting because it doesn't come with a CMOS battery installed 
by default. The good news, the X1 does have a dedicated two pin header where you can easily connect a separately sold CR2032 battery. Once installed, this little annoyance disappears and your settings will stick between power cycles. Now on the support side, their official wiki and documentation is great, but heavily Windows focused. Drivers, GPIO code samples, firmware updates, most of the examples provided are tailored for Windows users. Not necessarily a bad thing, just keep it in mind if Linux is your primary operating system. And if you run into issues, you might end up doing some trial and error troubleshooting, or like me, heavily rely on AI powered support. Now let's talk about a physical case. UE2 does sell an optional metal case, but assembling it was a super frustrating experience, full of tiny screws and awkward angles. In the end, I ditched it completely and 3D printed my own. It fits perfectly and looks really good, but I'm still not sure about the airflow. Time will tell if it ends up in a pile of warp plastic goo. A few more points worth mentioning. Clearly, this isn't exactly plug and play consumer hardware. It's geared more towards hobbyists, tinkerers, or professionals who know their way around BIOS settings, hardware assembly, and basic Linux troubleshooting. The lack of USB-C, again, feels really dated for 2025, but the onboard USB 3 ports partially make up for it. And while the CPU and RAM are fixed, the storage flexibility through the M.2 slot is great, especially for multi-OS or expanded use cases. So who is this X1 board really for? If you're someone looking for an affordable, compact, versatile PC for cybersecurity training, DIY projects, or general tinkering, it's a pretty solid choice. It packs a surprising amount of connectivity and flexibility into a really small form factor. But if you're seeking something that's totally plug and play or super polished right out of the box, this might not be your ideal match. For my purposes here, learning and experimenting with cybersecurity on a dedicated portable box, it's perfect. It air gaps my main system and lets me experiment freely without any stress. Let me know in the comments what projects you'd build with this board and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you fuckers next time.